and welcome back to my channel, More Morgan. Could you guys hear that airplane going over? I hope not. But welcome back. It's been a long time, no see. Um, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, my name's Morgan. Nice to meet you. But today we are going to be talking about the whole 30. And this is a little bit of a different focus of my channel because the videos that I have are PT related. And this is PT related because PT, as a PT, as a student PT, studying PT, we are all about improving the overall quality of life. So, one of the ways you can do that is by diet. So, I have completed my 30 days. Ah! I know today is day 31, and I told myself, you have to do this video now while everything is still fresh in your mind. Um, and today is day 31. And so, let's just talk a little bit about the reason why I did it. So let's backtrack to the summer of 2012. Um, it was right before my sophomore year of college. I was already chunky going into college, and then I got chunkier during my freshman year of college. I did hit the freshman 15, but I was close to it. Hold on one second. Yay for salmon! Coupon. Yay. Okay, toodaloo. 15, but I was close closer than I would have liked. So then the summer before I went into my sophomore year of college was the summer that I fell in love with fitness. Um, I started eating right. I think what really helped was that I worked at a fast food, seafood restaurant. So I was eating like big fish all the time because um, I would bring it home. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy that time. So then, and then I did a great job of keeping it off. I really did not gain anything until I started PT school. <laughs> I started PT school and um, <laughs> got a little chunky. Um, I didn't go, I didn't get crazy chunky. Like I didn't go back to, like I didn't go way back to like before I started. But um, I was definitely heavier when I ended my first year than when I started my first year. And it was really bad. And this is why, was, well, why it was bad. I have an exercise science degree. So, I know more than the average person of what I should be doing and when I should be doing it, when I should do it and how I should do it. I knew what I was supposed to be eating. Like I knew that I was not supposed to eat Chipotle twice a week. I knew that I shouldn't be going to Chick-fil-A every Friday after Cadaver Lab. I knew that I shouldn't be eating um, chips and hummus at 10 o'clock at night. Like I knew all of those things were bad and bad for me, but I continued to do them because it was just lazy. Like I said, I was just being lazy and I was being a poor planner. So I said, Morgan, there is no way that you can continue this for the remainder of your two years in school because I was only, I'm only going to get bigger. Like, to be honest, I'm only going to get bigger. That was the thing. So I said, and as a PT student, how are you going to be talking to patients and telling them like things that they should do to improve their quality of life when you don't even do them yourself? Who do you think you are? Like you cannot do that. So, so then I was like, okay, I have to do something. The thing that really got me hooked onto Whole30 and how I even found out that it existed was from one of my favorite YouTubers, but Alexandria Garza and like in the vlogs they would do like recipes and they would talk about their experience and they showed like you know when they would have the headaches from the sugar and all that type of stuff and I said wow like that seems like a really interesting diet and they were figuring out, figuring out so many healthy things and healthy alternatives to eat so I said um so I was like oh I need to go look at, into it 
So I think I was like at BJ's one day or Sam's Club, one of the two, and I saw the book. So I was like, okay, let me just see what's on the back of the book. So I'm reading the back of the book, and it was developed by a husband and wife team, Melissa and Dallas Hartwig. And then I'm reading it, and it's like, okay, Melissa is a certified sports nutritionist. Okay, okay, Melissa, okay. And Dallas is a certified sports nutrition nutritionist and a licensed physical therapist. I said, what? What? <laughs> so I was like, this is meant to be. Like, he's a physical therapist, so he, he must know what he's talking He has to know what he's talking about. Like, of course. So um, I purchased the book that day. I didn't start that day. But I started in July, July 11th to be exact. And it takes 30 days to get rid of a bad habit. So, um, or any bad habits that you have. So that's why I decided to go this route. And so when I first started reading the first chapters, I really liked everything that I was reading. Just because they said that this diet is ultimately, and I shouldn't even be using the word diet. Um, because when you use the word diet, like people freak out, even though diet like, if you look up the definition, what is the definition of diet? There are two words spelled by diet. Diet means the kinds of food that a person, animal, or community actually eats. Yeah, so it's a food that you eat. Like, it doesn't matter whether you eat healthy or not. Diet is what you ultimately eat, good or bad. So, but in our society, with the word diet, we think salad, salad. I <laughs> said that I probably had a salad once during my 30 days. Once or twice, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so when I read this book, I really liked everything that it stood for, and the reason that I did was because it ultimately wasn't about losing weight. That was kind of more the icing on the cake. This book really is... Um, to help you find out what foods are inflammatory for your health conditions. So for me, I was looking at things for my allergies, for my asthma, and my eczema. So, and how foods trigger that. Um, because they really do. Um, and I can tell you that I feel great. So one thing that I love about Whole30 is that you are not allowed to weigh yourself during the 30 days. If you weigh yourself during those 30 days, you ultimately have broken a Whole30 rule. Oh, let me get go back to that. So in Whole30, so basically it's very similar to paleo, if you've heard of paleo before. So Whole30 um, ultimately is no sugar, no dairy, no grains, no alcohol for 30 days. Um, which is a lot, right? It's like, what, what, what are you eating? Um, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, because natural sugar is fine. So lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, lots of lean cuts of meat, so um, chicken and pork chops and steaks and fish. Um, obviously not fried, but um, sautéed or baked. Let's say that you are on day 15 and you are halfway through it. Then you go to a party and you have a burger and it's just and which is fine because that's just ground beef right you can have that that's whole 30 approved um but you don't realize that they used lowry to season the burger and if you look on lowry the seasoning there's sugar in there so if you were to consume that burger on day 15 and then you eat the whole thing and you realize oh my gosh like they like they seasoned it with lowry then technically under Whole30 rules, you are supposed to start over. So what was supposed to be your day 16 will now be your day one. Seems extreme. I know it seems extreme, but you have to really follow through to get the best benefit from this. Now I'm going to talk about my results from Whole30. pounds um I lost a total of 12 pounds yay, yay me which I'm 
so happy about. Because honestly, I told myself I wanted to lose 10. So when I got on the scale, I had to do the math. I was so excited. I didn't even know how to do the math because I knew it was over 10. But I was like so excited because I got two more than what I was anticipating. So it was absolutely, um, obviously I'm over well with joy with those numbers um we did a great job it was hard um it was harder in the beginning but i would say that it gets easier as you progress that's all. and just figuring out what to eat and what not to eat um just because with whole 30 you have to read everything and i remember one thing i used to be so annoyed like grocery shopping i was like oh like i have to read like all the labels of things because Normally when I would go grocery shopping, I would just like get what I liked and go home. But then I thought to myself, I was like, Morgan, like you should be doing that anyway, regardless. Regardless if you're doing Whole30, regardless if you're not, you still need to read what's on the back of your food. Like that's really important. That's honestly now why I love eating fruits and vegetables because they don't have labels. So just throwing that out there. Um, I plan to maintain my results and um, even go to infinity and beyond at this point. You completed your 30 days. Whole 30 does have a um, two different tracks that you can follow. So you can do the fast track or the slow track. So with the slow track, um, you stick with Whole 30. So you still. Um, Keep to Whole30 rules, but if then if there is something that you really want, then you can have it, um, but just for one meal. So for instance, um, one thing that I've been craving since I've been on Whole30 is cake. I absolutely love cake. Vanilla cake with buttercream frosting, preferably a corner, please, if it's a sheet cake or if it's a round cake. I want the rose or the balloon. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I like. And I like pastel colors because when you get into more of like the prime colors, like the dark reds and the, the dark blues, they have more of a bitter taste. So they don't taste that good to me. But that's what I've been craving. So like today, um, when I left the gym, I ran over to the bakery and got myself. So I'm gonna, um, I haven't eaten it yet though. So I guess I'm gonna stop wanting it. Like that, and that's gonna do. So I'm gonna do the slow track and then you still have the recipes in Whole30. They are really good. They push me outside of my comfort zone. Um, probably before I started making home, before I started Whole30, I probably knew like a good five or six recipes of like go-to meals to make. But now I feel like I've got like a solid 20 that I can make. And I feel like that's wife material. It is. And I would, the things that I would recommend when you, if you do decide to do this, um, I would say try to get someone else to do it with you. So a friend, spouse, um, significant other, anything, someone else, because it has been so nice to have someone who's going through the struggle with you. Someone who understands, um, because it's kind of embarrassing because I know when I go out to eat, now I have to ask so many questions like, well, what's in that? And what's what's in the sauce? Okay. And then how do you cook the fish? Like, what do you do? you cook it in butter? Do you, you know? And people kind of look at you and they're like, you know, why are you even here? And I've started to think the same thing. I'm like, well, I could just go home and I know exactly what is in my food all the time. So... I would recommend doing it with someone, um, just because it's always nice to have a buddy in the struggle. It really is. Um, another recommendation I would make is um, try to pick a period of 30 days where you do not have any travel scheduled, which is hard. So during my 30 days, I had two trips um, that I had to go on. And for those two trips, and I was gone for each trip about three to five days and during those three to five days I packed my food like serious I've exhausted Whole30 a little bit too much um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any other questions about my experience or Whole30 in general 
please leave me a comment down below. And um, please like and subscribe to this video. And I will see you next time. Bye.